Hi folks, I'm Super Joe Southgate and I'm back to talk to you again about the principles of Pilates. So this is my second video on the principles of Pilates and it's well worth watching the first one before you watch this one. So what you're going to need if you're joining me today is a pole. Now it might not be that you have a pole but perhaps you've got a broom and you might be able to disconnect the end of that broom so that you've got a pole. Other things that you might want to use today uh, could be blocks and nice big blocks like that. Um, don't have to use them but that might be something that you might want to use or maybe great big books or something. Um, and that's more if you've got wrist problem. So exercising on all fours can be extremely beneficial for a number of different reasons. It does wonders around the spine, it strengthens the shoulder girdle and the arms, which is a, an area where ladies in particular tend to suffer with osteoporosis. So that can be great in strengthening those areas and the wrist joint. However, I've just said the wrist joint, but also what I must make you aware of is if your hands don't like being at a 90 degree angle, then don't force it. Don't think to yourself, if I keep doing this, my wrists will get better. I learnt the hard way. My wrists, I, I kept going on to them and um, at, actually at the time I was hyper flexible and I could bring my wrist quite a long way back. And I kept abusing the joint by going onto my hands and knees and leaning forward, usually to cor correct my clients. And I was, bending this joint too much and I really did some serious damage to it. So now my wrist joint really doesn't like bending back very far at all. So when I go on the hands and knees, I use fists rather than um, tipping back here. But I'll show you another alternative as well. Okay, so on all fours, we're going to do the first principle of Pilates and hopefully you're screaming at your screens now, hopefully you know exactly what it is it begins with A, I'm listening. That's right, it's alignment. So alignment, and the first thing that we think of when we think of alignment is the spine. The skeleton, we want the whole of it in alignment, but the first place we start with is the spine. And this is where your pole can come in handy. So I'm gonna poke this pole down through my bra, and if you've got a big bra on like me, there's quite a lot of material to it. And that will just hold the pole in place. Now, if I didn't have quite a, a thing going on here, um, I might put a belt around me, or a gentleman, you might want to tie some ties around you, um, just to hold that pole as best you can in place. And you want it to go along your spine. Now when you're coming on to all fours, like this, yeah, you should find that that pole touches the back of the pelvis, it touches the sacrum, okay? it then touches, it skips a little bit here, and then it starts to touch the back of the rib cage, and it touches the back of the head. So in effect we've got two little curves away from the pole, the first tiny little curve will be around the lower back area, and another little tiny curve around the neck area. Some of you might suffer with a condition called kyphosis. You might not even know that you suffer with kyphosis. So kyphosis is anybody who's a little bit curved in the upper body, and usually their head um, comes back a little bit like this. And as they're trying to straighten out, instead of um, being like this against their spine, they tend to do something like that. I want you to prioritise the alignment of your lower back over your neck. So if that means that your lower back, oh, let's use this hand, if your lower back comes up to the pole as best as it can, but the head's a little bit away, that's all right in my book, because over time you can correct the head. But prioritise the alignment of this area before you look at the neck. Yep, so I'm in this position here, ready to do my exercise. If you've got problems with wrists, you've got a number of choices. 
One of the choices is to use your books or use your blocks and you're popping your elbows down onto the block and coming forward a little bit here. You're probably more likely to lift your shoulders when you're in that position. Yeah, more likely to have your shoulders elevated towards your ears when you're on your elbows rather than when you're on your hands. Um, another thing that you could use is a wedge. So often my clients use that underneath their wrist. This is a wedge. Okay. Don't use it the wrong way around. It will make things much worse. So a lot of people, when they first try to use it, put it this way around. Can you see that's going to make things much, much worse? So this is the way around you want to do it because you want to make the angle at the wrist joint larger. Okay. So my wrist can bear that for a little while, but they don't really like it. And so I'm much better off going onto my fists. At first, I wasn't strong enough just to go on my fists, so I did have to um, persevere with it. And when you rest on your fists, it's the top two knuckles that you want to put your most pressure on. A long time ago, I broke a bone in my hand, and so that's actually helped me strengthen that bone by weight bearing on it. Whenever you weight bear on bones, that encourages calcium deposits to lay on those bones, and make the bones stronger. So if you're in good alignment whilst you're weight bearing, then it's going to encourage those calcium deposits right where you want them. If you're not weight bearing quite right, uh, then that can cause arthritis. So be careful, make sure your alignment's really, really good. I can't underline it enough how important alignment is. So your second principles of Pilates, folks, and that is what I call C, your core. So we've got A, C, and then we'll talk about the third one in a moment. So your core muscles. Core muscles, we were pulling up on our pelvic floor and we're contracting our external obliques and drawing in here. So I'll do that now. Yeah, so I'm getting myself into good alignment. There we go. Trying to stay in that position. I feel almost as though I'm pinning the newspaper down with my hands and I'm looking at the print but I'm quite long sighted. So instead of going this way, I'm going to push my head as far away as I can and try and read that sentence there. So I've got a, a nice little double chin going on here. So there I am. Now I'm pulling up through my pelvic floor. So zip up your internal zip and pull in your external obliques. Now begin to breathe laterally. So you've got A, C, B. Alignment, core muscles, and then lateral breathing. Because your waist is firm here, almost as though you're wearing a corset, your breath has to go here. This isn't a natural breath, this is a training breath. Because a natural breath would enable the diaphragm to move downwards and the tummy would expand as well as the rib cage moving out to the side. But what you're doing is you're training breath. You're breathing here to enable the abdominal muscles to stay strong all of the time so they get a training effect, so that they become stronger and tighter, leaner, more attractive looking. I've switched on my core muscles by pulling up through my pelvic floor. That's then engaged my transverse abdominus which is my deepest layer of abdominal muscle. And it wraps around me like a corset. After that, my external obliques, which connect my rib cage and move down towards my pubic bone, those muscles contract and they pull the rib cage in. And you can probably hear my voice changing. Now my diaphragm can't move down as I breathe. As I breathe in, I'm a little bit like a shark, like I've got gills and the breath goes into those gills and the ribs come out to the side. As I take the breath in, 
I bring it in through my nostrils and I feel my nostrils flare a little bit. I feel the back of the nostrils opening out too. And I feel as though that breath comes up like a great big wave and it follows the shape of my cranium. It goes up and comes down and as it comes down, it comes to the back of the lungs first of all. And with the back of the lungs and the bottom of the lungs, that's where it hits first. And so the rib cage goes out to the side and it moves backwards. But because everything's strong in the front, we've got no forward movement. I'll try to show you that on the video. I'm not sure how well it will show up, um, but I'll do my best. teaching people they don't get the arm position quite right can you see my arms are on a diagonal with my hands a little bit closer to my knees than my shoulders are to my hips um, sometimes when I'm teaching people find it really difficult to get that so what I get them to do is move to the front of the mat and they're imagining that this here is a pond and they're putting their hands on the side of the pond there's a frog in the pond, and that frog has uh, dived right down deep into the water. And so that person is coming as far forward as they can, and they're tucking the chin in, because remember they're long sighted, and they're looking down to see the, the um, underneath the rim of the pond here, because that perhaps is where the frog is hiding. Look at my back, can you see it's not in the right alignment? So I'm gonna tuck the tailbone between the legs as I hold it there. That's something you can check. So if you're here, you get your shoulders back, you tuck your chin in, and then if you then hook your tailbone between the legs as much as you can here, it should bring you into neutral spine. What you don't want to do is bust through that and curve the back this way. That's all right for a stretch, uh, but even that stretch, you want to aim most of that into your lower back area. The upper back curves easily this way. So it's just the lower back that you want to get that cat stretch into. I don't encourage my clients to do it up the top here, particularly if they do have kyphosis. Yes, I'm looking here. All right, now here's the hard part. Hmm? Check you're in neutral. Check your shoulders are back. Check your chin's tucked in. And then try your hardest to make either your hand light against the floor or perhaps lift it from the floor. Pop the hand down, making sure that the head's way in front of the hands, keep the shoulders back, and then try to do the other side. Now, perhaps that's too much on your wrist joint. Yeah. If you're on your elbows, yeah. If you're on your elbows, um, I probably wouldn't do that because then you're gonna get a twist in the body here. Another way of checking or challenging that neutral alignment, that good alignment, that good core muscle contraction and lateral breathing, would be to take one leg and ease it backwards. At this point here, can you see my big toes down on the floor? And I'm still in neutral spine. But if I raise that foot, I might be able to go a little way without my lower back dipping, but if I go any higher, can you see how that wants to dip here? When you see Joseph Pilates teaching, he does take his students through neutral spine and then out of it into that curve there. From my point of view, what's the point? We bend that way too much already, most of us. Most of us have got uh, quite a bit of a lordotic curve here. Some people haven't. Some people have got quite a flat back there. Um, but there's a huge number of people that are way too curvy here and the abdominal wall is too long. So if you're really trying to strengthen the abdominal wall and if you're trying to strengthen around your neutral spine, why don't you stay in it the whole way through this exercise? Why don't you slide the leg back 
Keep both big toes against the floor. Keep your head pushing forward. Stay there. See if you can squeeze your bottom a little bit more. See if you can draw up your pelvic floor a little bit more. If you feel that you are balanced, you could take your hand up. I find that harder than reaching it forward, but it's up to you. Now, if you're looking at the screen and you're trying this, you won't be in neutral spine because your head is looking at the screen. So tuck your chin in, lengthen the spine, and let's try it again. Slide the other leg back. Squeeze your bottom, push your pubic bone down towards the floor. Breathe laterally. Feel your core muscles working. And if you feel able to, you'll raise the other hand from the floor, either reaching it forward, reaching through the tips of the fingers, or perhaps lifting it here. Being extremely careful as you do this exercise, not to lean back like this each time as you go. Yeah, because that's not neutral spine. Like a movement like that isn't adhering to any of the principles of Pilates. And so you won't gain any of the benefits of Pilates unless you're actually doing Pilates. Okay, so I'm here. And I like lifting my hands best. I might decide to take the leg to the side. And again, I don't go too far. Because if I do, can you see how I come out on neutral? So just a little way out to the side will do. You might want to have your toes off the end of the mat for that. Um, at the start of each exercise, I always assess my neutral spine. You've probably seen quite a few times that I've corrected that. It's quite hard to do it and talk. Um, and then here as well, I stop for a moment and again I think, tuck your tailbone between your legs, draw up your pelvic floor, breathe laterally. I'm checking for all of those things before I take the leg to the side and back. And return it again. Well, I hope that helps and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, don't forget, I do some classes on Zoom. I also teach in my local area. Um, so if you want to join in with any of that, have a little look at www.superjoesouthgate.com. Um, if you like what I'm teaching, subscribe to my website and you'll see my other YouTube videos. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a very good day.